Hello friends and welcome to today's video where we'll guide you through the manual steps required to delete this malware from your Mac. Please follow our instructions in the same order. And if you don't understand something, check the description and the pinned comment for our dedicated article. Before doing anything else, we recommend entering safe mode on your Mac. Depending on what type of Mac you're using, the process will be slightly different. For Apple Silicon Macs, turn off the machine and then hold down the power button until the loading startup option screen appears. Then hold down shift, click on your hard drive and click continue in safe mode. After that, simply log in and you're good to go. On your Intel Mac, once again, start by shutting down the machine. Press the power button and immediately after that, hold down the shift until you see the login screen. Then log into your Mac. In some cases, you may need to log in a second time. Here we have to warn you that in the following steps, you will need to be especially careful. The steps provided are to be followed at your own risk. More importantly, if you're not comfortable tinkering with system files, we recommend installing an anti-malware program to do everything for you. Our top recommendation is Spy Hunter, which offers a free trial period. We recommend trying Spy Hunter first before other programs because we use it for our testing and it has the best odds to remove the malware. We've linked the program below alongside several other reputable antivirus solutions. Once you're in safe mode, the first thing to do when trying to remove this malware is to go to your applications folder and delete any new installed apps that may be linked to it. Think about what you installed recently, especially if there's anything that's not from the app store. Look for that app in the applications folder and send it to the trash unless you're fully sure it's not the source of the problem. Also, look for any other apps that look suspicious or ones that you don't remember installing and delete them too. Finally, remember to empty the trash before moving on to the next step. If you're not going to use a removal program, we recommend creating a time machine backup before you proceed. Since the instructions on how to use the Mac time machine are lengthy, we'll put them in a separate video. Then you can access them through the info card in the top right or the link in the description. Now it's time to check the activity monitor. You can find it by going to Applications, Utilities, or you can press Command plus Space, type Activity Monitor, and hit Enter to open it. Next, check the CPU and Memory tabs and look at the processes with the highest resource usage. If you see a process has a suspicious name and uses a lot of CPU or memory, then look it up. If you find reports that suggest that the process may be malicious, double click it. Then click on Quit in the newly opened window and then confirm the action by selecting the force quit button. Do this for any process that you don't trust, but only after you've verified they may be linked to the malware. It's possible that the malware might have created one or more login items that allow it to activate automatically whenever you log in. To check for such items, open the Apple menu, go to system settings, type login items in the search field and select the icon that shows up. Now, check the list of applications that are allowed to start automatically on login, and if you see anything you don't like or don't trust in there, click it and then click the minus button. Make sure to also check allow in the background list and disable anything questionable you may find there. If this malware is causing aggressive pop-ups to appear on your screen, then this step should help resolve this. Go back to system settings, open the notification section, and check the list of application notifications. Then disable the notifications from any app you don't recognize or don't want to get notifications from. To do that, click on the specific app and toggle off the allow notifications button. Do this for all the apps except for the ones that you want to be notified by. Mac malware commonly creates rogue user profiles, so you must also go to users and groups in the system settings and check it for any profiles not created by you. Note that a rogue user profile may have a normal looking name, such as Chrome settings or admin preps, but as long as it's not been created by you or anyone else using the Mac, it needs to go. To delete a rogue user profile, just select it and click the minus button. Do this for all suspicious profiles. Sometimes, malware on Mac also creates rogue internet accounts that can be used with apps like Mail, Calendar, Contacts, Messages, and others. To check for such accounts, press Command plus Space, search for Calendar, and open the app. Then click its menu from the top and go to Accounts to open your internet account settings. As before, look for and delete anything strange or unfamiliar in the list of accounts. The next step is to seek out and delete any rogue files that this malware has created in your system. 
Although such files can be placed in many different locations, the three folders that we're now showing are where you'll most likely find them. To go to any of those folders, click the Go menu, then click on Go to Folder, type the folder's address, and press Enter. Once you go to the first folder, look in it for files with questionable and suspicious names. Now, we know this is very vague, and it can be difficult to determine if a given file is linked to the malware. It also doesn't help that the different instances of the same malware can create files with different names. Still, we can give you some guidelines to help you identify and delete any rogue files. For starters, if you see files with any of the following names, this means that they're most likely linked to the malware. Also, if there are any files with any of these words included in their names, they're most likely rogue as well. For your convenience, these two lists are also included in the video description. Finally, files with names that look like a random sequence of numbers or letters are most likely to be malicious. Each malware file needs to be deleted, but before you do that, first you need to individually select each file, press space, and then look up the file path shown under Program Arguments. The path is where the rest of the malware resides, so you should go there and delete everything. Once you do that, you must also delete the file that sent you there. Do this with all malware files in the Launch Agents and Launch Demons folder. Once you've checked each of the three mentioned folders for rogue data and deleted everything suspicious, remember to empty the trash. Now that you've performed a thorough system cleanup, all that's left to do is take care of your browser. This process is slightly different for each browser, so we will show you how to clean Safari, Chrome, and Firefox. If you're using different browsers, there might be some small differences in the steps, but the process should still be very similar. Start by opening the browser, then click Safari menu from the top and go to the settings. First check the general tab and see what the URL of the homepage is. If it's something strange and unfamiliar, change it to Google or another trusted site. Next, go to privacy, select the manage website data button, click on remove all, and then click done. After that, in the website tab, go through all the permissions and see if any strange or unfamiliar sites are shown on the right panel. If anything grabs your attention, either click on it and click remove, or set its permission settings to deny. Last but not least, go to extensions and remove everything that looks like it could be linked to the malware, especially if it's an extension that you don't remember adding. To delete an extension, click on uninstall and select show in finder. Then right click the extension icon, click move to bin and empty the bin. Click the three dots menu and go to settings. Click extensions in the left panel and see what extensions are installed in Chrome. We recommend removing all extensions that you don't recognize, don't need, or don't remember installing. If clicking on the remove button doesn't directly delete the extension, then first click the toggle button to disable it, and then quickly click on remove again. Next, go to settings, open privacy and security from the left, and click on clear browser data. Make sure you're on the advanced tab and check everything except passwords and other sign-in data and click the clear data button. Also, scroll down to site settings and one by one check each permissions and content category for sites that you don't trust. If you find any unknown or untrusted sites listed in any of those sections, click the three dots next to their entries and click remove. Now go to appearance from the left and see if there's any custom URL written in the home button section. If there is and you don't recognize it, delete it. Also visit the search engine tab, make sure that the default search engine is on the one you want, and then go to manage search engines. Look for unknown and questionable search engines, and if you find any, click the three dots next to it and click remove. Head over to the on startup tab, check if the third option is selected there. If you spot any odd looking URLs listed, go ahead and remove them as well. In Firefox, first click the puzzle icon in the top right. Then click Manage Extensions and delete any unwanted or unfamiliar extensions from the browser. Next, click on the three horizontal lines in the top right, access Settings, and then open the Home tab. See if there are any unusual URLs added to the home page, new windows, and new tab settings, and if so, delete them. Then pay a visit to the Search tab and make sure that the default search engine is the one you want. Also, scroll down to the table of search engines that Firefox can use. If you see anything fishy there, select it and then select remove. Moving to the privacy and security, scroll down until you get to the cookies and site data and click on clear data. Make sure that both boxes are checked and click on clear. 
Lastly, go down to the permission section, open the settings on each category, and remove any questionable URLs. So this was our in-depth guide on how to remove the malware from your system and browsers. If you still have any questions, suggestions, or you have any other removal methods that could work here, be sure to leave them as a comment below.